I now like to walk you through and help you understand the concepts of domains, trees, and forests. Now, to start out with, uh, one concept I want to get across to you is that this, this concept of, of what a forest is. First thing to be aware of is that every single Active Directory domain must be part of this thing called a forest, okay? Uh, as well as a tree. It is, there is no way possible for a domain to not be part of a domain, uh, to not be part of a forest uh, and a tree, okay? Um, a lot of people think, well, what if you have a single domain, uh, then that then it's not part of a tree or a forest. You have to have at least two domains to have what's called a tree, and you have to have at least two trees to make a forest. That is not true. That is absolutely not true, okay? Um, I can tell you I've taught Active Directory Design for for. I think about 21 years of my life, I can tell you that every single domain must be part of a tree and must be part of a forest. If you don't have a tree in a forest when you set up a domain, you will have one when it's all said and done, even if it's just a single domain. So in this diagram that I've got up on the screen, this domain is a domain, a tree, and a forest all rolled into one. It's not a very big tree, it's not a very big forest, but it is a tree and a forest all rolled into one, okay? Now, ultimately, when most people think of trees and forests, this concept of trees and forests, you generally think of more than one domain, and I'll give you that because that's generally the idea. We want to have uh, a group of domains that make uh, this thing called a tree and then a group of trees to make this thing called a forest, but let me help you visualize this a little bit more. I'm gonna, uh, so I'm going to open up another drawing here, all right, and we'll just start out with uh, this this single triangle here, the single triangle is going to represent uh, my examlabpractice.com name. All right, so examlabpractice.com. All right, so at that point, is say this company just got started. This company's just starting up. It's a single domain, but when you set the domain up, it's a domain, a tree, and a forest all rolled into one. Okay. Not a very big tree, not a very big force, but it is a domain tree and a force. So the question now would be, why would you move into having multiple domains? So there's multiple reasons why you would go to having multiple domains, okay? Uh, one reason would be um, administrative purposes because your company is spread out through large amounts of geographical locations. For example, my examlabpractice.com part of my company might be based in the United States, maybe that's where the company got started and all of that, but the company is expanding and growing, it's, it's moving to different countries in the world. For, for example, maybe, maybe we've got a, a location that is over in the UK, all right? So we'll put another, we'll draw another little triangle here. This other little triangle is gonna represent the United Kingdom, all right? And so, uh, maybe we've also got another location in Japan. So our, our company has spread out to other geographic uh, regions, other parts of the world. And so um, I'm going to call this domain UK, but when you do that, when it becomes what's known as a child domain, because it's going to be underneath this exam lab practice name, it's going to be called uk.examlabpractice.com. All right. And then if this is going to be the Japan domain, it's going to be called uh, JP. We'll say JP just to be for short, examlabpractice.com, all right? And then these are child domains. They'll have these lines here that are going to represent what are known as trust relationships. Trust relationships allow our domains to share resources together. So uh, these domains here can all exchange and share resources. Now, believe it or not, uh, now you have domain admins that are in control of the UK, but they can only control the UK. You have domain admins Japan can only control Japan. We have domain admins at examlabpractice.com that can only control examlabpractice.com. Although we can have what are called enterprise administrators that can control the whole thing. Okay, child domains can even have other child domains. So if I wanted to, I could have another triangle maybe underneath uh, the UK here and we'll call that, uh, maybe it's Scotland. So we'll say scotland.uk.examlabpractice.com. 
All right, so this is you know getting into a bigger organization where you want to have lots of domains, and I will tell you that the more domains you have, the bigger the headache a lot of times. But ultimately, um, if you need to give full blown admin control over the uh, the different uh, areas of the world, using domains to do that as opposed to something known as an OU might be a better way to do it. Now I'm not getting into organizational units right now. I'll just say this that generally speaking. Uh, when you start bran getting into different branches, uh, areas of the world, you got different languages you're dealing with, different time zones. It's a lot of times it's a good idea to just let the the admins in those areas of the world have their own domain. But the beauty is these lines here, these trust relationships, they still allow us to uh, share resources together. Okay. Um, so right now, what you're actually looking at is you're looking at four domains: one, two, three, four. You're looking at one tree and one forest. This is not two trees. It's not, not two forests. This whole thing is one tree. How do I know that these domains are part of the same tree? Because they share the parent's name. If they share the parent's name, which is examlabpractice.com, then they are part of the tree. Okay, now, when would you go to multiple trees? You would go to multiple trees when there is a namespace change. So, for example, if... We had, a, we had another uh, part of our, our company that had a different naming convention of some sort, then um, we would expand out to that other, uh, that other name. Okay? For example, um, I've got examlabpractice.com, and maybe I'm going to call this, uh, this other domain, I'll call it prepare for exams now.com and and again I don't really uh, own that domain name I'm just using that as an example so it won't do you a whole lot of good to go to that domain name right now because it doesn't really I don't really have any control over it but I'm just using this as an example so then we got another triangle here all right another domain let me just maneuver that a little bit better all right we'll put it right here now what happens is, is that you have a trust relationship that connects those triangles together. So now you're actually looking at uh, another tree. So when you have a different domain name that you want to use, that is a different tree. All right. And then from there, if I wanted to have a child domain underneath that, I could. For example, perhaps maybe uh, we've got prepare for exams now.com we have a location that is stored over in Australia so maybe I call it au dot um, prepare for exams now.com and I'll have to move this up a little bit just to because I don't have enough room I'll just maneuver this a little bit better hang on all right and we'll just put the domain name down here like that all right, and so that indicates now that I've got a total of six domains because there's six triangles, right? There's two trees, okay? So this is a tree, and this is a tree, and then we have one forest, okay? So that's how that works, okay? Now, in order for domains to truly be part of the same um, forest, they must be born into that forest. You must bring them up. You must join them at the time you, uh, uh, the domain must, you must have started this domain first, and then when you bring the, this into existence, you would, you would join it into the domain. You can't uh, already have this created and join um, and truly be part of the same forest. You may say, wait a minute, now what happens if this company already existed and they merged? Well, you can set up something called a trust relationship still, but they're technically two different forests because when domains are part of the same forest, they share the same schema. The schema is part of the Active Directory database that makes up all of the different objects, all the different attributes. Okay, so when domains, when domains are part of the same forest they can share the following they can share resources so that's files and folders they can access printers things like that right um, 
and then they also share the same schema. All right, these are the object templates and attributes and all of that. And I'm not getting too deep into the schema right now, but basically this involves the actual database itself. Now, when two different companies merge and they've already got Active Directory, like if, if prepare for exam, examsnow.com was another company and they already had their force set up and we merged, they would not be sharing the same schema. We could set up a forest trust between the two and they could share resources, but they would not share the same schema. That means that if you created a special type of object in one forest, it's not going to replicate over to the other forest. Okay. All right. Now, the other thing that, that uh, domains that are part of the same forest will share is they'll share this thing called the global catalog. The global catalog is a part of the Active Directory database that if you're part of the same force, you share all the, the global catalog. And this is part of what allows domains to search for objects in different domains. So, for example, if, uh, if I'm in Scotland and I'm trying to look up somebody's user information over in Australia, I could, I could do that, especially if I needed their contact information or something like that because of this thing called the global catalog that's shared across the entire forest. Okay, not to get too deep into global catalogs right now, I just wanted to give you that basic idea. Okay, so again, just to kind of um, summarize, uh, every domain must be a part of a domain, a tree, and a forest, even a single domain. Okay, you don't, if you can get away with not having multiple domains in your forest, then do it because it's easier to deal with one domain than it is lots of domains. But if you need to expand because maybe you're spread out all over the world, then that's a good reason to go to multiple child domains. Um, from there, these are all part of the same tree. Now, you don't really need to go to a separate tree in your forest unless uh, you have a namespace difference. So, for example, this name here, Prepare for Exams Now, is a different name, a different domain name. We could go to a separate tree for that. You would still only have one root of the forest, though. The very first domain in the forest is called the root of the forest. This is where your enterprise admins are usually created. Enterprise admins have control over the entire forest. Whereas domain admins are user accounts that only have admin rights over just their individual domains. All right. Okay. So hopefully that gives you a, a, a decent little understanding now of domains, trees, and forests. This is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video. And I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel. So I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right. Thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again.